Welcome back to the Geek Centric Podcast, and welcome to our very special interview with one of the 10 outstanding actors for Marvel Studios Eternals. My name is Justin, and we are so excited for the guests that we have on today's episode. But before we get to that, if you're joining us for the first time, this is a part of our ongoing series we're calling Behind the Geeks, where we interview a guest who has worked behind the scenes or been a part of any of the things we love, from movies to TV shows, gaming, toys, collectibles, and all things geek-centric. Joining us today, we have Leah McHugh, who was playing Sprite in Marvel Studios Eternals, which hits theaters this Friday, November 5th. Huge thanks to the Disney PR team here in Canada for helping us set this up. Now, for a young actor, Leah has starred in a lot of movies. She starred in Hot Summer Nights, Totem, Along Came the Devil, The Lodge, Songbird, and actually releasing this year, A House on the Bayou, which I've heard fantastic things about. And of course, Marvel Studios Eternals, where she plays the old soul, Sprite. Nate sat down with Leah to discuss her excitement with the movie finally hitting theaters this Friday. Enjoy. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, I gotta say, congrats on the movie. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling a little nervous, actually. Friday is coming very soon. A little nervous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you're, are you excited to kind of finally be able to maybe talk a little bit more about the movie with people after it's out? Yes. Oh, my gosh. All my family and friends, you know, it's, it's going to be nice to actually like discuss what happens in the movie and not give away any spoilers. <laughs> It'll be really nice. Totally, totally. Um, I got to say, I love the movie. I thought you were so excellent in it as Sprite. So uh, <laughs> great job on all that. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, Eternals is being celebrated for its incredible and diverse cast. I want to know, what does that look like for you? How did you end up in the MCU? I mean, I think what's so special about this movie are, is that the Eternals are meant to represent, like, humanity, the entire Earth, every, like, from all parts, and, you know, different ages, different superpowers. I think that's what makes this movie so special, is it'll give, you know, everyone someone to relate to. Just working on this movie, it was so interesting to get to know people from, you know, all different parts of the world, you know, everyone's different accents. It was, yeah. it was like, it was a lot of fun. Very cool. Very cool. Um, awesome. Well, I mean, I, I, I think um, seeing you definitely representing a character of, you know, completely different age, um, even though you're in a kid's body, definitely. you're playing someone who's much older, right? So. Yeah, it's, I think it's, that's really special to me because, you know, I've been watching the MCU for so long and I feel like there's never, you know, there's never really been a kid superhero. Right. So to be able to like be that person that little kids, you know, can relate to or be like, oh, I think I'm going to be Sprite for Halloween. Like it's, it's, it's really cool. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, you know, during one of the press junkets you were at, you mentioned you uh, and Chloe worked very close on the character of Sprite. And you, there was a lot of very, you know, specific decisions that were made. I want to know what was one of the decisions that you and Chloe worked on uh, that you're most proud of in bringing Sprite to life? I think Chloe had a really good understanding of all the characters coming into the movie. And then she sort of related us to our characters and, and sort of, you know, had this, we all had this sort of connection with our character. Yeah. I think that was like the most special thing is I, I really felt that when I was playing Sprite that I was Sprite and I, I felt a really, you know, strong connection with that character. And, and I feel, I felt that it was, you know, very special that I got to bring her to life. Right. I think that's something like really cool that Chloe did that helped everything feel very natural and, you know, very connected on set. So you, did you find it was kind of easy to, to fall into that character? Like, would you say that, you know, you know, I find that uh, the character Sprite's very much like a, a storyteller. Have you always been kind of a storyteller amongst your family? I've been very imaginative since I was really little. My mom never really let me watch a lot of TV at all when I was little. So I was constantly like creating these stories in my head and I would run around the neighborhood and pretend to be a spy or pretend to be a princess. I built like these cardboard box houses. I mean, I was constantly doing things like that. So I think I brought some of like the youth to the character and like, you know, the childlike imaginative things. And then, but I've also been, you know, told a lot of my life that I'm an old soul. So I also feel like I brought, you know, the almost maturity level to the character as well. And there's a there's a, a good amount of 
maturity, I think that's shown, uh, and immaturity as well at certain times in the movie that I, I love that you brought to, uh, to Sprite. Uh, final question. I know you can't really speak to the future of Sprite, uh, but if you could see her team up with just your dream Marvel hero or villain, uh, who would you want to see Sprite team up with? Uh, <laughs> can I say, like, you, The Punisher is a Marvel show, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I love John Bernthal. I, first of all, I just love him. I think he's just, like, such he's a awesome. good actor. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's literally one of my favorite shows in the world. I love The Punisher. <laughs> so I think that would be pretty sick if I got to team up with The Punisher. That would be really cool, getting to do, like, <laughs> illusions on all the different people that he's bad guys he's trying to take out. I could see that yeah. working really well. Yeah. Very cool. Well, yeah. Leah, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, today. Um, thank, you. thank you for taking the time. And I can't wait to see you on the big screen again. I've got tickets to go see it for a third time in IMAX. And I'm so stoked. So I'm, I'm very excited to, uh, to see it and you again. Uh, on the, thank in you the so much. Cool. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. Well, that's it for the interview. Again, a huge thanks to Leah and the Disney Canada PR team. We're so humbled to be asked to take part in this, and, and it was just such a good time. So we hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts, if you haven't already. And if you want to write into the show and let us know your thoughts, you can reach us at wearegeekcentric at gmail.com or on Twitter at GeekcentricYT or on Instagram at wearegeekcentric. Keep in mind, we have a ton of other episodes covering a variety of different content, including our spoiler-free reaction to Marvel Studios Eternals. Nate, Kevin, and myself sit down and discuss, did the movie really live up to the hype of what everyone is anticipating? So be sure to give that a listen before you head into theaters this weekend. And also, after the movie hits theaters November 5th, be sure to come back to listen to our spoiler-filled discussion where we break down all the details about the story, that mid credit scene, and that end credit scene because we are geek-centric, and that's what we do. But until then, we appreciate you. Peace.